Today we're going to be looking at a thrift store camera and how thrift store cameras can be kind of a hit or miss. Hey there, welcome back to my camera collection. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Sony CCD TR81. We'll be going over the physical features on this camera and then I will kind of give uh, my overall opinion over it at the end of the video. I will show you some of the example footage that comes out of it. Now I didn't say that we're going to be looking at any of the specs because I've looked around online for some specs. I couldn't find anything. I also have the owner's manual. There's specifications in there but they're very like nitty gritty like detailed specs like how fast the rotor, the, the video head rolls and all that kind of stuff. So we won't be looking at any of the specs really. So with that being said, let's get into today's video. So if you watched my last video, you have probably seen and heard that this, well, I got this at a thrift store um, called the Idaho Youth Ranch. It came with a lot of accessories. Thrift store cameras, they can be hit or miss. Like you can get just the camera and it can work perfectly fine once you get like a battery and a tape in it. And then other times they'll just, not work at all. There will be things that are wrong with it. This thing came with a lot of bells and whistles and there's also something wrong with it and I do believe it's because the capacitors are going out on it, um, leaky capacitors. This camera it doesn't perform any form of autofocus and it has trouble performing I guess adding the, the color into the video so sometimes there will be color but it's kind of glitchy looking and you'll see that at the end of the this video. But most of the time it's just like black and white footage. So that just means that the capacitors are going bad on it. That's because this camera is from 1991. So this guy is actually kind of a professional or I guess a, more of a prosumer kind of camcorder. It is a video high eight and you can actually switch between video eight and high eight. But it actually has a lot of manual and like kind of professional features on it. And we'll get into that here in a minute. But uh, when I seen it, man, I had to hurry and snag it because I, th I figured that it would be a, a great camera to check out, but unfortunately it has those issues. Another weird issue that it, that it had, and I have another camera that had a very similar issue, but it was like a lot worse. You can open up the, I guess the hatch for where the tape comes out at, but um, it's a little bit of a different color. And I think Sony or the manufacturer put like this, I don't know, kind of like a, a rubbery uh, texture to it. And I think just over time that starts to decay and uh, it gets really sticky and gross feeling. So I tried taking rubbing alcohol and like some, some cotton swabs and stuff and just cleaned it up as good as I could. And it, it got rid of the stickiness, but I kind of wore away a couple of the uh, labels on it. There's a, there, there's a couple of labels you can't really read. That's my fault. <laughs> just because they're printed on with just like some ink. So before we go around this thing, I'll show you a lot of the things that it came with. So I'm gonna set this aside just for a second. So for 28 bucks, it came with a Pelican case as well. It's a very hard case and it, you know, you could probably throw this thing in a river and it probably wouldn't get wet on the inside. This thing's actually really nice. Um, you, you have some, some, latches right here to open it. And then you can also take like padlocks and lock lock it in two different spots here. And you've probably seen this on my other video. Um, there's a lot of compartments here. So it came with the original charger. It's got the power supply. It plugs into the charger and you can plug this side in like a battery and power the camera if your battery is dead. It came with a TV cable, so you can hook your camcorder to your TV and watch your videos and record um, from like your VHS player and stuff like that. Came with the original Sony little nickel sized batteries that are used to keep the time code. The original neck strap for it that is still in the package hasn't even been opened up. And the original remote for it that also hasn't even been opened up. So. Chances are the people who bought this bought it and then never even used it hardly. Although it seems like it has dirty tape heads, so maybe they did. They came with two batteries. There was like a small one and then there was like one of the bigger chunky ones. I toss those in the garbage just because if they're as old as the camera, they I guarantee they don't take a charge. So um, I did buy a brand new battery for it. So 
If somebody does want to buy this camera, it'll come with a brand new battery and you'll be able to use it. Last thing that it came with was the original owner's manual. So now that we looked at all that, let's go around and look at all the uh, features on this camera, shall we? So it does come with a little lens hood that attaches to the hand strap. The lens is a 37 millimeter lens thread on it. So if you can find like an Optica 0.3x uh, super wide fisheye, um, you can put that on here and uh, film skateboarding with it if you wanted to. <laughs> I actually have one um, I, I used on here. You'll see in the test footage. Along with that, it does have a eight times optical zoom to it. I don't believe it has a digital zoom, just a optical zoom. It does have a manual focus ring on it. Coming along the side, you do have, uh, it's the auto lock. So when you have this little door um, closed, that's in auto mode, but if you slide it open, it puts it in manual mode and then you can access the manual features underneath the little door, which is your white balance, your shutter speed, the focus, and your exposure, along with a wheel to go up and down with the exposure. You do have a memory button along with your color and mode and your superimpose on and off button. Now when looking at the uh, the manual, I was trying to find a lot of what the buttons and everything do, um, but I don't really know what DST and area does. If you know what it is, leave a comment in the comments and I will pin it. So you can make me look stupid. <laughs> you got your date button along with the time and your battery release switch here. So you push that in and you can slide the battery to the left and it'll pop out. And then just below that, I think this is actually kind of rare to find, but this camera came with a bunch of little plugs and they go into all of the external plugins, if you will. So like the, uh, you have your remote plug in here along with your headphones. So there are little plugs that you can pop out and then you can plug like your headphones in and monitor your audio. It keeps all like the dirt and everything out. You got your record button and your lock and standby switch. So if you have it in lock, the camera won't turn on and standby will turn it on. It's kind of a secondary power switch, if you will. Coming along on the right side, you have your external mic plug in here. It's great that it has it, but there's nowhere to mount an external mic unless you have some form of a filming handle or if you want to have like a like a handheld microphone and you know where where you can interview people one of those maybe that's like wired <laughs> and then you also have all of your video out source sources which is great because it has your full yellow white and red RCA composite component cables um, and then it also has S video so you can get a better video image out of it. I actually didn't know S video existed back in 1991. I guess it does. Um, you do have your infrared sensor here so you can uh, use your wire, the, the wireless remote for it. That is the uh, receiver for that. And then it also has a stereo microphone. So this thing is pretty high tech for 1991. And you can also switch it between, you have a built in mic uh, switch up here and you can switch it from wind or standard mode. So um, in wind it will hopefully, in theory it's supposed to block out the uh, the, the sound of wind uh, blowing in the mic. Along the top you have your power switch so if you switch it to I guess to the front of the camera it is uh, record mode in the middle is off and switching it to the back of the camera is uh, VTR mode or playback mode. And then you also have your edit search buttons right here, along with your playback buttons. So your rewind, play, fast forward, stop, pause, and record. The record function is for like plugging it into your TV and uh, recording footage from like your, your VCR or, or whatever. Then you also have this little screen right here that tells you how much uh, battery you have left and how far along on the tape you are. It also shows that you are uh, recording or not recording. So it'll have like the little little circle if you're recording and then it'll have like the two bars if you're if it's stopped or not recording. These are the a couple buttons that I uh, rub the uh, indicators off or the uh, the labels off. Um, but one is a reset and then I think the other one um, has something to do with the, the date and time I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. You do got a, it's a nice rocker zoom, but I, it is just a um, 
It's not a variable speed rocker zoom, it's just one speed uh, in and out. And then on the side right here, you have a little switch that you push and you can pop the, the old hood up and see what's under the, uh, the old engine bay. Under here, you have your eject button for your tape, the little blue button. So um, if you ever do get one of these cameras and you're like, well, where the hell do I eject the tape? Yeah, you gotta make sure you uh, pop, the, pop the hood on the bad boy and uh, eject the tape that way. Some other things that I forgot to mention as I was going around, you do have hi-fi sound on the side here underneath the viewfinder and you can do auto and then a one and a two and then you have your uh, infrared remote uh, on and off along with Hi8, you can have that on auto or just off. So pretty much you can switch it between video eight or Hi8, which I definitely recommend Hi8. And then if you want to do some form of editing um, through like your LANC uh, remote plugin or through uh, one of the old school uh, editors, uh, you can turn that on if you want. There's a little switch to turn that on or off. And then another thing that actually makes this camera really nice is it has a secondary record button underneath the viewfinder. So if you're filming uh, more handheld or if you wanna like hold the camera more down low, you can hit it with your left, left hand instead of your uh, button on the back here and record that way. Or let's say you wanna have this hooked up to a filming handle and then be able to put like a fisheye on, on the front of it you can uh, hit record on the top here instead of the back here to start recording. So if you wanna use it for skateboarding, you can do that or some form of action sports. The viewfinder on this guy is a black and white viewfinder, but then you can also take it and you pop it out like that and that's how you can get it to magnify. So when you're done using the camera, you can push it back down and uh, store it away a lot easier. So yeah, you pull it out and then you can actually see what's going on. So as for the physical features go, I think that pretty much sums everything up on this. I think that it is a great uh, camera to collect if you can find one that has working, uh, well, has good capacitors in it, or if you know how to replace capacitors or if you know somebody who can replace capacitors for you. It's definitely kind of a goofy looking little camera. I feel like Sony made a lot of cameras that were this kind of body style, but they just remind me of like little submarines. I don't know. They're just kind of funky looking because the, the lens isn't centered on the camera. It's on the left and then along with the viewfinder as well. But I guess that makes it so that if, I guess if the viewfinder was more on the right side, it would be a little lopsided. It would be kind of, your videos would be kind of off a little bit, if that makes sense. The accuracy of what you're pointing at. I really like that this camera has two r recording buttons on it. It's nice that it has stereo audio to it, along with a external mic plug-in. And I like that there's a lot of manual functions and buttons on it. Um, I know a lot of cameras, especially like JVC cameras that are like VHSC, um, they don't have a lot of manual features to them. And if they do, um, a lot of cameras, you have to go into the menu and manually set things up. So it's nice that this has a lot of buttons to be able to quickly set the camera up how you want. So if you wanna buy this camera for yourself, I'll have it listed on my eBay store. Um, it'll come with the, well, the camera. It will have everything that is in the Pelican case as well, along with the Pelican case. If you have one of these or a similar camera for yourself, I'll make sure to add tapes, uh, batteries and chargers, uh, video converters, and if I can find a good fisheye for one of these, I'll add that as well. And any other kind of good accessories that I can think of that will uh, make this camera work a little bit better and more easy. And I just want to say thanks for everybody for uh, supporting the channel for the past two, two years? No, it'll be two years in September. So about a year and a half. You know, I would really love to go full time with this channel. I just appreciate everybody actually watching the videos and interacting with me, leaving comments. Everybody's always so nice. Even if I get something wrong on a spec or if I say something wrong, you know, people generously correct me. So thank you for that. And thanks to everybody who shops through Amazon through my links in the description. They are affiliate links, so 
if you do buy anything from Amazon through those links, I do get uh, a little bit of kickback from that. I use that money to get more cameras to produce more content for everybody out there. I appreciate the, uh, the generosity and people shopping through Amazon through my affiliate links. And along with that, you can also support my channel by buying the cameras that I actually do reviews on. Every time I make a video, um, after I'm done with everything, I post it up on eBay, pretty much let anybody out there uh, snag it. So I also use the uh, the money that I make from cameras, um, selling them on eBay, that goes back into getting more cameras as well. Every once in a while I'll buy some things here and there that I need for the, the channel, like my mic system that I've got. Um, I've got some new lights. Uh, I just bought a brand new fisheye for filming. None of it really goes to waste. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody out there for supporting the channel. So with all that being said, uh, shall we check out some of the, uh, the video footage for it? Hopefully the audio works in it as well. So if not, hopefully it's not the, the worst video footage you can, you, you'll see. So let's check it out. So thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. And if you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe because we talk about old school retro camcorders pretty much on a weekly basis. So on that note, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.